All right, uses of organic compounds. Let's take a look here. Okay. So, not that you have to know any of these. I know it looks like a huge list, but probably would be good to have some idea of what all these organic compounds are for. The functional groups are listed over to the left there. So, you know, like amines and pharmaceuticals, dyes, DNA, reactants, those esters, they do fragrance, fragrances, food colorings. Ethers are for anesthesia and refrigerants and things. Um, amides are in Kevlar and nylon and some of the polymers we're about to talk about. Aldehydes are in disinfectants and preservatives. So it kind of gives you an idea that this def, the, these organic compounds do give quite a wide range of um, different uses. So this is kind of why we study them based off of the functional groups that are attached. All right, so let's talk about polymers and polymerization. Polymers are super large, big molecules. We studied some of them in biology last year, like proteins and DNA and RNA and polysaccharides like cellulose and starch and things like that. Those ones are all natural. We're gonna focus on the synthetic ones taking a look at some of the synthetic examples here. So basically a polymer is created from a monomer, a subunit. That's what's listed right here. The monomer versus the polymer. And this is like saying it's a repeating chain. Okay, so this is just a repeating chain that keeps going. So plastics and a lot of other synthetic polymers are made this way. Or they take the small subunit, it's an alkene, it has the double bond in the middle. You see this double bond here in both of the monomers. Now what happens basically is that double bond breaks, so it forms single bonds with the nearby carbon and it just keeps adding onto the chain. So these small little subunits break their double bonds and they just keep adding and adding and make this huge polymer molecule. Now the examples up here we see Poly uh, PVC, uh, polyvinyl chloride or polychloral ethene. That particular one is like PVC pipe, uh, the white pipes that you see under your sink and things. That would be the material that it's made of. The polytetrafluoroethene there that is called Teflon on your pots and pans, the nonstick film that's on top that helps to not let things stick that's going to be made from one of these synthetic polymers as well, okay? So here looking, definition, extremely long molecule consisting of many groups of atoms. Repeat in a regular pattern. That's the thing, you're looking for the regular pattern of repeating. Small, simple organic molecules. Um, these all have hydrocarbons of some kind, but they might have other little groups attached to them. And they're the small subunits. They always have that double bond in there that are going to break and attach to uh, nearby ones, forming the single bond connections, creating the polymer. So here's another example showing you ethene to make polyethylene, which is the basic regular plastic out there, okay? So that's another example here. You see the monomer with the double bond right here. And you see that it's a repeating subunit of just C's and H's that create the plastic material. So how do we work a practice? No, before we get to the practice, here we go. Polymers can be natural or they can be man-made. Examples of natural, of course, are the ones you've heard about in biology. Anything that comes from the natural world, you would classify like polysaccharides, cellulose, starch, um, DNA, proteins, uh, fatty acids, any of those ones that you heard about last year when you were learning a little bit of uh, the, the biomolecules, the nutrients. The ones that are gonna be synthetic are going to sound synthetic. They're gonna sound like they were made in the lab. They're going to sound uh, like they are some kind of brand name, okay? Nylon, polyethylene, polyester, Teflon, Kevlar, polystyrene, which is styrofoam. Um, there's tons of them. You can Google po synthetic polymers and you'll get a huge list of a bunch of different ones. 
Okay, so that's kind of the general way to tell the differences like from the natural world, from animals, from plants, versus like sounds like a chemical name or a brand name, because those ones are going to be the synthetic ones. Now here, doing the practice. And it really doesn't matter where you draw um, or where you decide the pattern starts, but you're looking for a repeating pattern here. So if I'm looking at the polypropylene here, the PP, the first one, what you're going to see here is that we have, an, you know, at the bottom, an H group, then a CH3, an H group, then a CH3. As you can see, it's just a repeating pattern. So what you can do is block it off like, this is your subunit. And it really doesn't matter. I could draw that part as my subunit, or I could draw it this way as my subunit. It's just a repeating pattern, okay? Whichever way you pick out your repeating pattern there. Now, I'm gonna erase this and start over. Okay, real quick. Okay, so ch chose that particular one to bracket off as the subunit. This is how I write my monomer. I know my monomer always starts off as an alkene where it has a double bond, and it's just going to have the same attachments as the regular subunit here. So when I'm writing it, it would be C, double bonded to the O, then H, an H, an H, and then a CH3. So this would be the monomer here for that particular polymer. The only difference really is you're taking the one subunit and then creating the double bond between the carbons. When, of course, you're creating the polymer, that double bond breaks and it just makes single bonds adding the rest of the subunits. So it creates this long chain. So that would be the example for the polypropylene. Now let's look over here at the low density polyethylene. Obviously we see here there's, you can branch off any of them. Like that would be fine, this would be fine. The repeating subunit is just C's and H's. There aren't really any attachments here, this is just a long hydrocarbon. So it really doesn't matter which one you decide, put your lines around. For instance there, now how do we create the monomer? Anyone? How do we do that from, from our little subunit? That we, we, the repeating pattern we just bracketed off. Anybody got an idea? I could write this subunit over here, like so. Just copy it. Then what's the only other thing I need to do to it? To get the monomer. What's the only other thing I need to add? The double bond. That's all I need to add, right here. Very good. And then we have our monomer for our low density polyethylene. So that's all you have to do there. It's pretty easy, not too hard. All right, so this section, IUPAC naming with functional groups, we're not doing that this year. So some of you may be interested in learning this process. I will be adding the video from last year if you really want to look at it, but it's not going to be on the quiz, so you do not have to do it. If you're going to take AP next year, it might be something you want to, you know, glance through just so you have like a little bit of idea here, but uh, it is definitely not required. But you're welcome to take a look at it and finish out, do some of the practice there. I do have the class video from last year if, if you'd like to look at it.